All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new playlist. This is going to be the beginning of the 3D playlist. Uh, we're going to start very basic again. Some of the things that you're going to be making in the beginning is just going to be a couple different shapes and blocks. But we need to learn the basic tools in order to make things in three dimensions. Okay, so as you see on the screen right now, you're looking at our first object that we have to create. You do not have to do the title block versions for these drawings. The title block versions are the ones that are given information to you. So I'm telling you that this object has three sides of it that I'm dimensioning for you. Obviously, every three-dimensional object has six different sides. You have front, back, left, right, top, and bottom. But I'll always give you like two or three of them in order for you to figure out, you know, what the dimensions are on each side and how to create these objects, okay? So this will always be laid out the same. If there are three views, you'll see the front. This is the front of the object. You'll see the top of the object, like we're looking down at it, and you'll see the right side of the object, okay? On the next drawing, 3D2, that one's going to show you the front and the top only, uh, but, you know, from time to time, we'll change back and forth based on what given information I think that you need, okay? So let's go on another document here. This is going to be just a 3D model that has your name on it, and it's got line weights on it, and you print it out. It's very simple, okay? So in a brand new document without a title block, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go down to the gear, uh, in the bottom right corner, I hope you guys can see that from where I'm going to be. Well, at the bottom right corner, you'll see a little gear. So if you can't see it because my uh, image is covering it, it just looks like a gear. And all you're going to do is click on 3D Basics. Okay. What that's going to do is that's going to change your toolbar menu. And it's going to give you all your 3D tools. These are basic 3D tools. So you have things like box, cylinder, cone, sphere, you know, different uh, very basic shapes that you can make that are going to already be 3D. Uh, the extrude tool, after you draw a flat profile, in order to give it depth, that would be your extrude tool. Uh, any one of these tools, if you highlight over them, will give you a little picture of what it does. So you can see like revolve, it says if you draw a little profile and then you use the revolve tool, it'll revolve it around 360 degrees. Uh, or loft. If you have two things, one is a little smaller, one's a little bigger, they can loft between each other. Okay, so we'll go through all of these um, as the uh, drawings progress, but in the very beginning, we're really just talking about some of the very basic tools. Um, we're going to talk about making this dado block here because this is our first assignment, and then we're going to go from there each video. Okay, so here we go. What you're going to do, okay, there, there's, there's something that's very important when you're drawing in 3D, okay? To this point, everything that we've done, we've always been drawing on the top, all right? This is always said top, and it's always said 2D wireframe. We've never changed that stuff before. Uh, the, you got to think about AutoCAD. There's two different ways that you can change the view of your object. You can change it here by clicking on this and, you know, selecting bottom, left, right, front, whatever side you want to draw on, uh, or you can change the cube, okay? So if I change this cube here, I can change to the front that way, or I can, you know, spin it to the right side or so on, okay? The difference between these two is critical to understand. AutoCAD is kind of like a piece of glass, okay? So think about this glass table that you're looking down through like this, okay? And you have your 3D object that is right underneath that glass, all right? If I'm looking down through the glass, I'm able to draw on whatever side is facing me. So right now, the top of this mouse is facing me. If I change this top left thing here to say front, what that's going to do is it's going to rotate the mouse so I can just see the front of it, but I'm still looking down at the front of the mouse, okay? Or if I change it to right side, it'll just flip this way, and I'm still looking down through the glass. This, this side, these things right here, top, bottom, left, right, in this menu are the sides that you're able to draw on, okay? So if you're trying to draw something, you have to use that one in order to change it. If you're trying to just look at a different side, it's different because if we had the 3D model like this, forget the glass top anymore. Now we would be like, okay, this is the front. Oh, that's the top. Oh, I'm looking at it from over here. This is the right side. So it's totally different. One is just to see, you know, by changing this stuff, it's just to see what side you want to see. This one is to change what side you actually want to draw on, okay? So that's important, okay? This drawing and any drawing going forward, what you want to do is you want to select the one view that is the most detailed because the more detail you get out of the way when you're drawing the flat front profile, or I should say the flat profile, I already gave the answer away, 
um, that one that has more detail is going to save you more work later on. Okay, so in this case, we have a rectangle with two lines. We have a square, and then we have an object that has an in and out, which is probably our most detailed view. This is a very simple block, but this is probably the most detailed, and this is the front view. So going back to my other drawing, that means I want to change this to say front because I want to draw on the front. Okay, so with the line tool, I'm now going to draw that. It's three, goes up one, comes in 0.5, and you can just stay on the green lines for these because these are just left, right, up, down, left, right, up, down, and so on. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, then it goes over two, then it goes down. Oh, I think I messed something up. Hold on. 10A. You guys hear my dog in the background? <laughs> Lay down. All right. 0.5. 0.5, and then 2, and then down to close. Okay, so we have the front view. Now, it's also important to recognize that you just created eight different lines. They're all separate, they're not connected to each other. I could have also done this with the polyline tool. And I'll do that right next to it so you can see the difference. The polyline tool is going to make one shape total. So it's already going to be together and one shape, which is what we're going to need at some point. And then close. So this is one shape here, and this is eight different pieces. If you go with the eight different pieces route, you are able to do offsets off of these lines. Let's say I needed to put a little circle here or something. I could offset those lines to get the position of that circle. I can't do that with this one because if you go to offset it, as you guys know, a polyline is going to either offset the entire thing out or offset the entire thing in. Okay, So we would actually have to do explode on this one to pull it back apart if we wanted to put a circle at a specified location or position. For this one, they're already apart. I could do that if I needed to. There are times when it won't matter which one you do, and there will, times, there will be times when it really does matter. Okay, So how do we get these eight lines to be joined like this one? The tool is called Join. So you type Join, you select the eight lines, and you hit Enter, and you'll see down at the bottom it says eight objects converted to one polyline. It's very important to look at these numbers and make sure that they are correct. There was eight lines here because I counted them, and it says that eight of them converted to one. So that's what I want. If you see nine objects converted to two polylines, that would not be good. If you see 12 objects converted to three polylines, or even 12 to one, or anything like that, it's not good. It can't be that way. It has to be the exact right number uh, of lines, okay? Now, it's important before we move on to say you should not ever be drawing like this when you're doing 3D stuff. One, and then two, so okay, that's a three inch line, and then 0.5 and 0.5. Oh, this one's short, so I'll just, instead of extending it, I'll draw another one. You can't do that. If this down here looks like one line, it has to be one line. Okay, it's very important. You can't do that because it won't work. All right, so now we have a shape that's all together. All right, um, but we already had that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to explode this one so we can still watch the side by side. Okay, so now the default view, remember, I'm saying we're looking down through the glass, which means that the default view is the top looking down. So I have to change this back to say top. Now we're looking down at these profiles. They're flat, there's no depth to them yet, but I'm going to add that depth in a second. I also want to now change my view of the object, not the side that I'm going to draw on. I already said, hey, I'm going to start drawing on the top by changing this back to top. But I do want to click on the bottom right corner of this cube here, in order to see the 3D view like this, okay? I have two two planes now, or, or two profiles. I have one that is already joined, it's a polyline, and I have one that is not. Here's what happens when you extrude this one. You, you hit extrude, you click on it, you hit enter, and then you tell it how far back you wanna go. Negative number goes back, positive numbers go forward, and this one it doesn't matter, but going back over here, we know that the depth of the object, because this is the top view, is one and a half. And we know that this plane is two, and then it, you know, that little lower part is 0.5. So you gotta study these a little bit to understand what size it is. But the number I'm looking for is 1.5, okay? So if I go to extrude, I click on this, I hit enter, and I do 1.5, it's gonna bring it 1.5 towards me, okay? If I do this one, and I do extrude 1.5, 
you can see the difference. One of them has a fenced look to it because these are all just surfaces now, and one of them is actually a 3D model. Okay, This is not the right way to do it. If you ever see it like this, you missed a step. You have to join those lines together. And I'll show you one step further here. If I go to 2D wireframe and I change that to be conceptual, that's going to fill it in with basically like a purple color. Okay, But you'll see that this one is solid and that this one is not. There is a tool on the right side. It's called Orbit. You can click on that and you can orbit around the screen. So if I zoom in, you can see that there's a hole in there. It's not a 3D object, but this one is. Okay. There's also a shortcut for orbit. If you hold down shift and then you hold down the scroller. So remember, if you just hold down the scroller, you get the pan. But if you hold down shift scroller, you get the orbit. And the reason why that's better is because if I am already in a tool drawing something and then I do an orbit and I let go, I'm still in that tool. Okay. So which one's right? This one. Okay. So let's get rid of this. Let's do a zoom extents. We now, since I orbited, have to reset my view. So I've got to go back to the top now. Not this top. I want to go back to the actual top view. Then I want to go to the bottom right corner. This is a perfect what we call isometric view, which means that these are exactly 30 degrees. Uh, this is exactly straight up 90 and so on. Okay. So what do we do when we want to print? Well, you guys are going to put text on there. So in order to do that, you have to change back to your drafting and annotation tools. So go back to the gear in the bottom right and click on drafting and annotation. You have to click the A and hit single line. You're going to click right next to the model. We're going to use one quarter inch text height for this stuff. As you can see in the notebook, um, our text rotation angle is still going to be zero. So don't just do any random clicks. Make sure you have your caps lock on and then you type your name. And that's pretty much all I need. You can put period on there too if you want, period one. Okay. And then click off and hit escape and you'll see it drops right next to it. Now, if you need to move this anywhere, if you select it, you can either use the move tool and stay on the green lines. Okay. Uh, or you can grab the arrows. This red arrow is going to stay on that plane. We try to get it centered like that. And then we're ready to print. There is one thing that's different with printing. When you go to print this, First of all, we have to change conceptual away. Okay, conceptual is basically just to see and make sure it's solid. Um, you can go to other ones too. There's like, uh, you know, x-ray or whatever. You can see the back corners and stuff. But the one that we print on is called hidden because it saves the most ink. Okay. Oh, and also we're going to have to put some line weights on here. So make sure your line weights toggle down here is turned on. Make sure you select the model and you put your 0.7s on there. Like so. Okay, so now we're ready to print. We go up to the A, we hit print. There are still three things. You guys are going to select the 5225 printer. You're going to select center the plot. You're no longer going to do extents. You're going to do window. And window is going to bring you back to the drawing when I click on this. And it wants to know what window do you want to print. Well, I'm going to start up here with a click. And then I'm going to go down here and click. You're, you're telling the computer what you want to print, what area. You don't want to go like that because that's going to make it really small in the top left corner of the page. Your box is the size of the paper. So we do want to be probably somewhere in here. There's no perfect answer. Something like that. And then you hit OK. All right. That's pretty much it. Number one is done. And then we will move on to number two. Thanks for watching. Later.